Well, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to evening prayer on this Friday night. I know it's been a short week, but it's felt like an exceptionally long one here at our place. And uh, we're really glad that you are joining us again for this uh, last night of prayer. Yeah, we hope you have had a good week uh, with some of these new liberties that are back in our lives from level three. Uh, you know, we're so accustomed to level four that we actually haven't enjoyed any of the benefits uh, of our newfound freedoms. We haven't gotten the car. Uh, we haven't had take out coffees or takeaways. Um, so we're looking forward to, to doing some of those things this weekend. But it's interesting as you reflect over the last five weeks, because I think, you know, obviously the real um, dominant theme is that all of our usual life patterns and rhythms have been turned upside down. Uh, to the extent that even when we get some of them back, uh, we're so unaccustomed to them that it's quite hard to step back into them, like this week. Um, but what we find in, um, in the, the, for the Jews of both Jesus' day right through to now, they had really important daily rituals. And one of the most important, or seen as really the, the, the most important thing that they would do at the beginning and end of every day, was to pray what's known as the uh, Shema prayer out of Deuteronomy 6. And it's this little prayer uh, that says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And they would pray that and they still do every morning and every night. But there's one thing that's seen as more important than praying the Shema prayer. And that is that a Jewish son would give his father a proper burial. And that's obviously a, a huge challenge for uh, what is a really big Jewish community in New York City right now, uh, because this is one of the things that they can't do, but it's seen as the most important thing uh, that they're meant to do. And um, in our reading tonight, uh, Jesus says what's uh, described as the most shocking statement in the whole of Scripture. He says to a Jewish son whose father has just died, follow me and leave the dead to bury their own dead. This statement uh, is really shocking. It's, it's deeply offensive uh, for, for Jewish hearers uh, then and now. And it's meant to be quite shocking because Jesus is saying, like that Shema prayer, that we have to follow him with all of our soul, all of our strength, and all of our heart. Um, but it's not really about control. Uh, Jesus is not trying to displace all the important things in our life. What he's saying is, we're going to find out in this reading tonight, is that it's only when we fully uh, entrust ourselves to him that we can find the healing and the freedom and the true life that he's offering us. So we're going to start uh, with this reading um, from Matthew's Gospel. And it comes from Matthew chapter 8, verses 14 to 22. It's uh, called, On Following Jesus. Jesus went into Peter's house. There he saw Peter's mother-in-law laid low with a fever. He touched her head. The fever left her and she got up and waited on him. When evening came, they brought to him many people who were possessed by demons. He cast out the spirits with a word of command and healed everyone who was sick. This happened so that the words spoken by Isaiah the prophet might come true. He himself took our weaknesses and bore our diseases. When Jesus saw the crowd all around him, he told them to go across to the other side of the lake. A scribe came up and spoke to him. Teacher, he said, I will follow you wherever you go. Foxes have their dens, replied Jesus, and the birds in the sky have their nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere he can lay his head. Master, said another of the disciples, let me first go and see to my father's funeral. Follow me, replied Jesus, and leave the dead to bury their own dead. So a really interesting question for us as we come to Friday night uh, and enter into uh, the weekend is how do we at this time follow that really radical call to follow Jesus? And it reminds me of uh, something that would happen every Friday afternoon uh, when I worked in the financial center in London. And it was this mass migration that would happen of uh, Jews out of the um, financial center of the city uh, every afternoon, quite early uh, in winter. And they were heading home to get there before sundown uh, to enter into the Jewish Shabbat uh, or Sabbath. And it was this very powerful visual symbol that uh, their worship of God was more important, took priority over everything else, even the working week. And I think as we come to our Friday nights and our weekends, 
We need to acknowledge that we enter into these with all of the unfinished business uh, of the week, especially uh, in what are, are quite choppy times in terms of our, our weekly patterns and daily rhythms. Uh, that we bring with us all of the, um, the unfinished business of work, of family uh, and the other roles that we play. And as we do this, uh, we enter into essentially uh, our own Christian Sabbath. And the Sabbath was a day in the Old Testament when uh, all of God's people actually stopped and worshipped Him. And it was actually this really radical acknowledgement, uh, out of humility really, that only God is God. That God is the creator and the sustainer um, and the healer of all life. And that does come with this really humble acknowledgement that all of our strivings and our work during the week doesn't actually make or break our lives. It doesn't change the world. It's only God uh, who is God and who is in charge. And so tonight we want to lead you in what's uh, often described as a handing over prayer. And it's really just a prayer that brings to God all of the unfinished business of the week so that actually we can enter into uh, his Sabbath rest, uh, which is really uh, acknowledging that he is God and it's in his provision that we find restoration, healing and freedom. And so we're just going to lead you uh, through that prayer tonight. Lord, as we enter our Sabbath rest, we acknowledge that you are our loving creator, that through your grace and provision you have saved us and bound us forever to you. We thank you that because you are our provider, we can find peace and rest. We acknowledge that what is done is done, and what is not done is not done. Lord, we hand over to you those conversations or interactions with people or situations that have left us churned up and restless this week. Lord, we hand over to you now those things that are outside our control, that are causing us uncertainty or anxiety. Lord, we hand over to you the unfinished projects and tasks of our week. We choose to let them go now and to embrace freedom in our limitation. Lord, we hand over to you now our disappointed expectations, those expectations of others and of ourselves. Lord, we hand over to you our tiredness and flagging energy. Lord, we hand over to you now our uncertainty and concerns for the future, especially over the coming month with all of its unknowns. And Lord, we thank you that you are God, our creator, saviour and healer. We receive your new life through the presence of your Holy Spirit. Give us peace tonight, restorative sleep and new hope for tomorrow. May we know the joy of your Sabbath rest through the presence of your Holy Spirit tonight. Amen. Hey, well, thank you for joining us uh, tonight for Friday evening prayer as we close out the week and enter the weekend. We hope you do have a really restful uh, time over the weekend. Uh, we hope you can join us for All in Church at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. It'd be great to see you there. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you soon. Praise God from whom blessings flow praise him all creatures here below praise him above you heavenly hosts praise for
Father 